So Eric, thanks so much for being here at Google today. Ryan, thank you very much. Second time yes. is a charm, I I'm hear. getting more and more familiar with the stage. And I, yeah. I, I handed in my application to Google, so I love the building so much. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I'm just waiting for a call back. <laughs> you know, I knew I should have got rid of that iPhone. But that's another story. I'm, I'm getting an Android any second now. Cool, Hopefully. that'll probably put it over the top. <laughs> right. um, just kidding. But yeah, I just wanted to talk. We're, we're celebrating Black History Month tonight, yes. and I'm so happy you're here hosting the event. Thank you. Um, are you, you know, I heard you were Mr. Black Teen Universe. Mr. Black Teenage World was actually world. the title, yes. So the whole world, not just the U.S., <laughs> but <laughs> everywhere. like one person from overseas and was like, we, we got it, we conquered the world, then, you know. But yeah, I was 16 years old, man, and my sister, uh, who I, I give a lot of credit for me even doing art in any form or fashion because she was so talented. She was in a lot of pageants oh, cool. that my mom and uh, father were putting her in. And my mom found a pageant that for for teenage boys. Cool. And uh, <laughs> I got up there and and uh, embarrassed myself and and won the state. And then I, I won the national. And it gave me a full scholarship to Howard University. So that was the great part that came out of it. Great. Also, as well. Yeah, I'm sure that couldn't have hurt your image of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Mr. right. Mr. World. <laughs> Mr. Teenage World. <laughs> so, but can you, in, in seriousness, can you explain, like, how did that affect your trajectory from there? Like, was that a big moment, or was it just something you did? Or it was a huge moment. It was a huge moment. I think, one, I've always said that I was somehow going to go to college on a scholarship, whether it was playing football or doing something. Um, and at the same time, you know, going into my junior year, where at that point I was drawing and designing clothes, doing theater, making music, skateboarding, BMXing. I was just all over the place in everything I wanted to do. So to gain a scholarship by pretty much singing, for the most part, I had to do other things in the, in the pageant, it, it really said, you know, Mom and Dad, I think I'm not going to be a political science major. I <laughs> think I'm going to try. Uh, you know, there wasn't an R&B major. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't a, I, can I major in being, I'll be sure. Just, uh, you know, I, can't, I couldn't do it. So I, I grew up doing theater, you know, yeah. so I said, I went to, as a musical theater major, man, and it was, you know, going to Howard, and it was one of the best decisions ever in my life. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about Howard and the role of historically black colleges and universities, and, well, you're and also what Black History Month means? means indeed. To. You're walking down hallways that Donnie Hathaway hummed down. Yeah. You're going into practice rooms that Roberta Flack played in. You're standing on a stage reading a monologue that Felicia Rashad read a monologue on. You know, just the history of it. And I learned very early on to be very prepared um, because at any second, um, Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest or Bill Cosby or Muhammad Ali will walk down the hallway or across the yard. Um, but at the same time, my friends were getting signed you know, uh, if anybody remembers, and if I ever, the group Shy uh, Fall in Love song, we were friends. They were our buddies at Howard, and they handed their record to um, a, a DJ. And two weeks later, they're on Arsenio Hall. And, wow. and, and five months later, five weeks later, they had, you know, finished the album in a week, handed in the album, sold three million copies. And I handed them my demo and said, just hand it to somebody in L.A. Before you know it, I was flying there. And in my sophomore year, I got a record deal. Yeah. You know, and um, so it was just a, a very working environment. My One of my professors, um, the late, great, amazing Al Friedman, who played uh, Elijah Muhammad in the Malcolm X movie, was one of my teachers. Wow. So, you know, and he shot it while teaching. So it was like... You know, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to L.A. next week to try to meet with Warner Brothers for a record deal. Like, how can they be like, no, stay here and work on your studies when he's like, I'm going to meet with Spike. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you had to just it was just a working environment. Yeah. Marlon Wayans was a good friend of mine. He was doing movies and going to class at the same time. So I think I needed to see that. and It was the first lesson of learning how to balance everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's a lot going on at yeah. once, and I think uh, inspiring to, yeah, to see. Much. So thanks for sharing that. No problem. So can you talk about how, you know, you had the deal with Warner and and what you were in my mind, you were kind of a trailblazer of independent music. Um, you know, people were doing it, but you've been able to do it and sustain it. Um, I, I think my career has 
um, been able to overshadow how many times I've been dropped from record labels. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or just how unsuccessful I was in, <laughs> in like, you know, getting a contract signed was one thing, but getting that album out is a whole nother tricky monster. And um, and I remember um, having a song on Billboard and it's growing. And being a class, a school in, in in school, I remember telling my parents like, I can't make it to class. Just I got a video out, and just all these people are, you know, grabbing me. I can't. I literally can't make it to class. I said, I, you know, I just gotta. I can't do this. So I, I took off like two years, and then the Warner Brothers situation didn't work out. I went to Ireland, and the Ireland situation didn't work back. And um, my mom was like, you're going to go back to that school and you are going to get your scholarship back. I was like, all right. I went in and I literally sang to everybody like, please give me my scholarship back. I'll get straight A's, I promise. And, uh, and, and, uh, and amazingly, I went back and it was like, but it was crazy because I went back and it's like, oh, that's that kid that had that record deal. Like the whispers walking across mm. the yard like, oh, that's that kid that fell off. Didn't he? Was he that? That's when I had that video. That was a long time ago. I wonder if he still got money. Like it was like, oh, like you know. Wow. So like the humbleness of like, it made me a better student, a better singer, a more humble artist. Uh, you know, a more focused everything, every aspect. And I will tell you, if I had a, if I had this huge record and just, you know, took off, I wouldn't be doing music right now. I wasn't talented enough at the time. I didn't know how to handle everything. Like so, I had to go back. And going back to school and graduating was like the hardest thing I've ever done in life. L- it really was. Um, but it was it was a great decision. And and even with that, I went back to college and I started writing songs for other people. That I landed a song on 112, you know, and uh, there's a group called Fajr on Warner Brothers. So I was placing songs and still recording. And um, it just got to the point where, you know, for me, the deals weren't working out. And I had just too many songs that just meant too much for me. It all started with, a, I had a real bad breakup. And I just closed the studio doors and started recording. And those songs weren't, I wasn't going to give to somebody else. So that's how, you know, my independent career started. That's cool. Would you mind sharing a couple of the song titles that fall into that category? Yeah, there was a whole album called Esoteric. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's crazy because it was a healing record for me. So when our album came out and, you know, the songs like... Um, uh, what is the, what are some of the song titles? A uh, newborn child, which is saying I'll cry like a newborn child, which I was doing at the time. Uh, when the album came out, and I would meet you know women, they're like, "This record is so beautiful." And I'm like, "What do you mean? <laughs> this is about pain, you horrible person!" Like, <laughs> you know, like don't ever listen to my record. You don't understand. Um, but I had to realize that people could relate to what I was going through, and it helped. It helped me heal, but it helped them heal. Um, there was a, a song called Miles Away on there that was really uh, important. Um, and, and really the record, uh, esoteric means only meant to be understood by a chosen few. And that to me was my career. I wasn't trying to change the world. I wasn't trying to win everybody over. I was trying to just do music for someone who would feel this. Yeah. You know, because I always felt like my music career and my love life were parallel. They always have been, you know. And as a songwriter, I was doing great. I had songs for everybody and mother. I was writing all these songs. I was doing very, very well. But was I fulfilled with what I was doing? You know, I feel like I was a soul artist writing um, a lot of times, you know, compromising or just missing, as a fan, missing what was on the radio. So I said, all right, let me start doing what I feel like I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm still doing to this day. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, someone, I mean, I've, I'll be real with you. I've healed from your music, and that's uh, how I first got in, got into you at Past Paradise, Find a Way. Those, uh, are, those are songs that when you listen to, you're like, man, he's been through it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll Thanks. take Link checks payable to <laughs> Eric Roberson, whoever. You can just <laughs> fill it out. I'll, my father's back to he'll just accept the checks and payments. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it, it's and and I tell I tell you, um, um, I, I hope I, I say this respectfully. I got a text earlier, and I, I could show you for whoever doesn't believe me. He says, um. Uh, a guy I was talking to who's in the industry and he's struggling in, in his travels and he says, man, you write great songs about passing up vaginas. <laughs> and I was like, what a great, horrible compliment. That was like <laughs> amazingly horrible, incredible at the same time. But, but you know, for me, I, I realized a long time ago, what I will tell you is that the lyrics come and I, I can't take credit for them. They, they come and then I learn what they mean. 
and then I try to be good enough to follow them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's been my whole career. So it's like I write a song and go, wow, this sounds pretty good. Mm. And then the lyrics are stable. And and then I I learned what that song meant for me. You know, I meant uh, Find the Way was important because it was, <clears throat> if anyone listens to Find a Way, it's a song of mine. And, and, and one, vo it's like I sang it two parts, one high note and one low note. And I panned the high one all the way to the right, and I panned the low one all the way to the left. And the high one meant to be emotion, and the low note meant to be reality. And as, as a man, I was battling that. Like, sometimes we meet a young lady, and we're so used to our routine, she could be the soulmate, but I got that game, I gotta put that game on her, that I'm just ruining. Like, can I stop the game for two seconds just to see who she is, you know? And, and I've been lucky enough to write about it, uh, you know, or my breakups. What I made a decision a long time ago when I went back to Howard that every subject that came to mind or everything I went through, I'll put to music. So every argument, every great day, every whatever would be put to music. And I lost a lot of girlfriends that way, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you came with the good and bad. I mean, you wrote that for me? You wrote that about me? It was like, it was the same thing. It was like, it literally 24 <laughs> hours apart, you know. Um, you know, so just, but it's something I decided to do, man. And, and if, if God allowed me to have certain thoughts and lyrics and, and melodies, how dare I not use them? Yeah, no, that's incredible. So yeah. what's your process? Do you just wake up? With, with something in your head, or does it vary? Because I know sometimes, you know, people will say, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night. Sometimes I actually sat down. Does it change? or how to It changes. Yeah. I'm a fisherman of creativity, so I'm just, I, I'm, un, I'm under the belief that the idea, are, it, it already exists. I just have to find it and make it tangible. Yeah. So uh, a lot of my records are written in the bathroom. I'll leave it up to you to think what's happening in the bathroom. <laughs> When I'm when I'm writing them, but every aspect from <laughs> shaving to showering Coming. to other s words that fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Situate, soaping up, situating. you know, situating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, they they you know, but uh, it's funny because before I was very much a, a slave to creativity. I was very much like if an idea came and I was at the Thanksgiving table with my family I haven't seen all week, I would get up right then and go in the studio. You know, I was like very much like, I have an idea and I, everyone must respect the idea. You know, it was like now I like, I believe that it's going to come back now. So, yeah. you know, now having kids and, and having a wife and so I got, I realized that it's a great idea, but I'm pushing my son on the swing and he's too young to be left here. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> let me, it'll come back. You know, it's like, so, and it comes back and it comes back and, um, but I'm always writing, always. Like my phone is full of lyrics, and and I'm always writing letters, and and just I feel like you should just write in general to stay in shape for when the idea comes. Definitely. Yeah. You mentioned your kids. Just two more questions. One is, what's one thing you learned about yourself since you've become a father? Which was two ah, two years ago ish. Yeah, I have a two year old and a seven month old, and I'm not gonna cry <laughs> in front of all these people. <laughs> <clears throat> the thing I learned about myself. Um, man, uh, I, I don't know. It's a lot I learned about my kids, but I learned that I can be a morning person. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> I probably, for the last 20 years, have average waking up at 12 to 1 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. And, uh, and now my sons get up, you know, I'm 7.30, you know, 6, whatever, in the morning. Uh, but I, I learned it's another level of love, man. But, I, you know, I, it's, it's tough because I, I have great parents who I knew the example of incredible love. I have amazing nephews and nieces, and, I mean, I was crazy over them. So um, I knew that it could exist, where it wasn't just a, more of an aha moment. Um, but I, if anything, I learned that you can balance it all. Yeah. Like, you know... I would tell everybody out there, like, there was a guy recently who uh, I was just working with who was a cameraman. And he was like, he travels a lot. And he, he just got married. He's like, my wife wants to have a kid, but, man, I just, I just travel too much, man. And I'm like, it's going to fit. It's going to make its way, man. Like, don't, don't hold off for that. If I knew, you know, I don't think we really waited. I didn't push it away. But now my last two records I recorded with my, a lot of time my son was on my lap. Yeah. Either one of them, you know what I mean? Because I got to get this idea done. I want to spend time with him, and he wants to spend time with me. Let's go in the studio, that you know works. what I mean? And it just works. Yeah. It just works. And I look forward to, you know, having them on tour with me and uh, 
you know, the first time they actually write a song or, you know, something like that. Yeah. I look forward to all that. So cool. um, I feel what I may learn is just that my dreams are coming true more and more. Excellent. That's yeah. wonderful. So speaking of the studio, what's uh, last question, but what's coming up next for you? Um, I've heard ah. United Tenor is in the mix. And I'm not going to cry about this one either. <laughs> I have to say that first because if I don't say it, I will cry. Uh, I started doing music because of three influences. And one was a tribe called Quest. Um, number two was Stevie Wonder. And another was uh, a group called Commission. It's a gospel group from Detroit called Commission. Thank you. And and one of the founders of that group was a guy named Fred Hammond. Um, amazing vocalist, amazing writer. And not only just musically, but I remember as a, as a kid hearing their music and going, whatever that is, I want to do that. And um, I've had chances of meeting Fred uh, Hammond for many years, and I passed up every time. And my staff and some friends surprised me with a meeting. Um, I'm in a restaurant thinking I'm about to be interviewed by Tom Joyner, and in walks Fred Hammond. I'm like, I tried to run away, and I was like, oh, you got me, you got me, man. <laughs> man. And, um, and just because I wanted to be able to tell him, man, like, yo, like my career means so much. I'm not gonna cry. Here we go. Ah, right, tough it up, tough it up. Um, because of you, you know what I'm saying? I have this career, and I didn't I didn't know if I was where I needed to be at yet to really understand. I, I didn't want to just hear, oh, that's cool, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, we're gonna eat. Like, you know, I didn't want that to be blown over. And um, so we kept in touch. And, and a couple months ago, he said, um, hey, I want to got an idea. I want to form a new group. And I would love for you to uh, be a member of the group. And I was like, uh, okay, I mean, I'll I'll play the piccolo on an album for free. I'll pay to do it, you know. <laughs> And uh, it's not just me and him, it's uh, Dave Hollister from the group Black Street, an amazing solo artist who I'm a huge fan of Dave, and another amazing artist named Brian Courtney Wilson, uh, who I'm friends with already. I met him years ago, and we kept in touch. And we all went to Dallas, and over the last you know, month or so, we tri traveled back and forth, and we recorded an incredible album. And uh, so the group's called United Tenors, um, or UT. Uh, the album comes out March 26th. We had our first concert. Uh, last Saturday, we shot a music video and live performance for a crowd of DC, I mean, in Dallas. And we cried through the whole show. Like, all four of us are just literally, you know, it's it's a dream come true, man. Like, really, in every aspect of, in every aspect you think, we, we, we performed four songs and we played the rest of the record. So while we're singing, we're crying. While we're playing the records for people, we're crying. Someone said something amazing on stage, so we're crying. So we're literally, when you see the video, we're all like this with just towels on our face through the whole performance. But it, but it's tears of joy, you know. Yeah. And it's like, um, and we're probably not going to stop crying anytime soon. Like it, I mean, in all honesty, we're probably 10, 10, 20 shows in, we're <laughs> we're still going to be just like, <laughs> I just <laughs> I just still appreciate this opportunity, you know. Uh, and it's a gospel album, man, you know. Um, I pride myself on I never hear the fact that I'm a Christian in uh and I feel that it's been a ministry in all of my music. Um so it's really cool to 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 be doing a gospel album and then with with two of my heroes and a very good friend of mine as well. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank yeah. thanks for sharing that. Thank I'm, you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really honored to have you all here today, too, to the point where I might cry with you. So. Hey, <laughs> tears of joy. Te everybody, cool. everybody, tear, <laughs> so just pass cry. the tissues out. So, right. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Ryan, Looking forward always to tonight. a pleasure, man. Yeah, for sure. Always. All right. Thank you.